Hello my friends, welcome to my channel. Today we're doing a little sketchbook session with watercolor and today we'll be doing a style of painting called a trompe l'oeil. This is a French word for uh, optical illusion. So this is a style of painting where you use usually objects and try to replicate them as well as you can with a painting to make it look like they're sitting there on the paper, somewhat like this. So I found some autumn leaves outside and a couple of cute little acorns and that inspired me to do this kind of painting here. So I'm starting out with finding my composition. That's why I laid all of those out on the paper first. And then I'm going to start with this bigger leaf here and sketch this out. I did start by sketching it out um, just by observing it. And I did my best to replicate the shape as well as I could, um, but it still looked a little bit off to me. So you'll see in a minute here that I put the leaf on top of my sketch and I just made a few little marks where I needed to change the shape here. I'm doing that now. I just made a few little marks where I needed to change the shape um, to make it look more like this particular leaf. That is totally fine. This is your sketchbook session if you want to try this style of painting. And so you can um, quote unquote cheat as much as you want. There's no rules here. So I adjusted the shape just a little bit here. And then once I was happy with my pencil sketch, I started with my watercolors. And I'm doing this whole painting in watercolor. Um, this is a watercolor sketchbook, so I wanted to, tr to do that. Oh, actually, I drew everything out first. Just kidding. I drew everything out first, so I'm moving on to this red leaf here. Um, and these are a little bit easier because they are just uh, oval shapes, so nothing too complicated. Just drawing out a few of the veins, giving myself a little bit of detail to work off of. And same thing with this yellow leaf here. And um, then after that, I started on my watercolor painting. Um, and again, I did trace a little bit of these shapes. I just kind of marked how big they should be, um, but I didn't really trace all the way around, if that makes sense. Now it's time to start on the watercolor. So I started on this big leaf and I used a brown color. It was burnt sienna and uh, burnt umber mixed together with a little bit of blue and I just wanted to give it a whole wash all the way down the painting. So you'll see it speeds up here a little bit, so this doesn't take quite as long, um, but I just did a flat wash with this color and then I was going to add some colors on top. With watercolors and particularly with watercolors that you want to look realistic, it's important to work in layers. So you wanna work from light to dark and work in kind of these thin layers and sort of build up the detail as you go. You don't want to start off with a really heavy wash of a really dark color unless it's a really dark object to begin with, um, you want to sort of build up to that so that you can keep those highlights and you can sort of add that texture and that complexity as you go. That's an important note for watercolor. Um, here I'm doing this wash. I sort of color match this to the, the leaf, but you can see it's not quite the same. The leaf is a little bit more vibrant, maybe a little bit more orange, but I plan to build that sort of color, build up to that color as we go and add more washes and build up to that color as opposed to getting that color right the first time. Um, while this is all still wet, I dropped in some brown in the edges of this leaf, kind of where I see some shadows in that original leaf and maybe where I see some of the ends that are a little bit more dead, that's where I dropped in this darker brown. And since the wash was still wet, that spread out and made this really nice watercolor effect. So that's what I did there. I also added a little bit of detail, starting, starting detail to those veins, and I'm just kind of starting to build up the detail, but I'm not gonna do too much until this first layer is dry. One other thing I did to this layer, which I probably didn't need to do at this stage, but I felt like I should, um, was pick up some of this color from this first wash. So while this is still wet, again, I used a dry brush to pick up some of this color from places that the light was hitting that leaf. Um, and so this keeps those areas a little bit lighter and it adds a little bit of a highlight. Again, I don't think this is entirely necessary for this first wash, but it is what I did and it kind of helped the highlights show through in the later layers. So while that first layer dries on that first leaf, I'm moving on to these washes on the other leaves. Just again, the preliminary washes, these are not meant to match the color of the leaves completely yet. It's just meant to get an idea so that we can build up to it later. So for this one, it is a reddish brown wash that I'm just putting down in the whole thing. And then on the edges, I'm adding some brown, just like I did with that other leaf um, to show those areas that are a little bit more dead and to show those little spots that are um, just a little bit darker than the rest of the leaf. And then we're moving on to our last leaf here, this yellow one, again, just a preliminary wash. This one's a little bit easier to color match because yellow is a light color, and so it's not gonna take me quite as many layers to get that rich dark color of those other two leaves. So this, is, this first wash is actually a pretty close match. 
and again dropping in that brown this one has a few more spots in the middle of the leaf so i'm dropping those in too just where i think they should go and adding in those initial little color changes i'm dropping in a little red as well i can see a little bit of red or reddish tint in the original leaf so i'm just dropping in that color as well so that that spreads out and uh, affects the yellow and makes it look a little bit more of a warm tone Okay, so now that the initial washes are done, we can go back and start adding our details, start building up the color that we need to match our original leaves. So starting on this biggest leaf here, this is gonna take the longest. Um, I'm just starting to build up this color with more of an orange burnt sienna style color, um, not too brown, because I realized that after this dried, the color changed a little bit and it made it look pretty brown and pretty dull. And so I wanted to liven up that color a little bit with this burnt sienna color and that was really helping. I did this in sections here, so I just did a little section with that color, and then I would take my brush, clean it off, and then use a damp, clean brush to blend out that section so I wasn't having any harsh lines. This is just so that I can get a little bit of texture and another wash without getting that weird um, texture that you might get when you just have harsh lines there. And I'm doing the same technique the whole way down the leaf. I am leaving a few spots there where I can see the original color showing through. And I like that personally, and it helps it to look a little bit more 3D. Um, so I'm not covering the entire thing. So I did that to the whole leaf, you can see here, and now I'm starting to add the details for the veins. This is with a dark brown. I think I might have gone a little too dark with this color. The vein details shouldn't be quite as pronounced as we might think they should be. Um, but I think in the end, because I did add one more wash on top of this, that detail kind of got washed out a little bit better. Like I said, I added one more wash to this just to get that color really nice and vibrant and just as rich as the original leaf looks. And I did the same technique where I just put that color down in various little spots and blended that out with a damp brush. Um, this again helps that texture and it helps keep the leaf looking 3D. And I added some of those extra little veins there and added some little details where there are holes or brown spots in the leaf. So I added those. And I think the total effect is that it looks pretty realistic, not exactly like the leaf, but pretty close and I'm pretty happy with it. The last thing I did, and this is important with a trompe l'oeil painting, is add a shadow. So I put the leaf on the paper so that I could see kind of where the shadows should be. And I tried to copy that as best I could. This part really helps make it look like this leaf is sitting on my paper. And I just used a light gray for this. It's important to not go too dark with your shadows. That will kind of overwhelm the original painting. So now we're moving on to our next leaf. We're gonna go with the red leaf here. This is a good example of how the washes when they dry sort of get a little bit less vibrant and a little bit lighter. So it's important to layer so that you end up with a nice vibrant color once the painting dries. Um, and so here I'm just adding that color on top. Again, doing that little technique where I blend out that color with a damp brush. And then I'm starting to add a little bit of detail to the veins and to the leaf in general. So I'm using brown to add that center vein another wash, some of those little freckles and little spots on the leaf, and just filling in the rest. And I did that same thing to this yellow leaf here, again, adding another wash, just trying to color match as best I can and add those little details like the brown spots and the little freckles. adding in the cast shadow so you can see I'm making this one for the yellow leaf the one for the red leaf has already been done and I'm just making sure the edge of this shadow lines up with the edge of the leaf and is a little bit more textured to give off the texture of the leaf itself mm -hmm. 
All right, and now for the last little items of our trompoy painting are these adorable little acorns. I was so excited when I found these in my yard. I thought these were perfect to paint. So I started out with my pencil sketch like I did with the leaves, and I did mark the top and the bottom of these acorns on the paper just so I knew how big they should be. And I just tried to copy the details as much as I could. They're pretty small, so it's not like I could get too much detail in there anyway, but I did want to get the essence of the object. And then just like with those leaves, I'm starting with the first wash, and this is just the general color of these acorns, just starting out with this brown color. And once that first wash was dry, I started with the main detail of these acorns, which are these stripes, vertical stripes going up and down the acorn. And then I added in a little bit more detail on the little cap that sits on top and the little sticks that connect it to the tree. And then we're adding in the last little detail here, which is of course the cast shadow. I think this really may pulls it all together and makes it look like these acorns are sitting there on top of the paper. So adding in these shadows here are really the last detail of this painting. I am going to leave the background white. I really like the look of the white paper. If you'd like to add a background on yours, you are totally welcome to. Um, and I really hope you enjoyed watching me paint this. I hope you learned a little something. I hope you try this out for yourself. If you're looking for a little sketchbook prompt, here is the final painting. I think it looks really nice. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this, what else you'd like to see from me. Leave a like, all that stuff, and see you next time.